couple of months ago, I was invited to a private bug bounty program on HackerOne, and I found some interesting bugs that I want to talk to you about. In this video, I will show you how I analyzed a JavaScript file to discover a weak cryptography implementation to brute force a SHA-256 hash, and how I bypass rate limiting and bot detection mechanism to exploit a critical IDOR vulnerability. I put together a lab to simulate the vulnerability. I will leave a GitHub link to the lab files in the description below, so you can exploit the vulnerability yourself. CD to the lab directory and run docker compose up. If you don't have docker compose installed, you can install it by running app git install docker compose. Once the containers are up, navigate to localhost on port 3000 and the lab should be up and running. When I was enumerating the target, I started by creating a test account. The target that I was hunting on was a platform similar to Instagram, where you can post and share pictures. When I was proxying all requests in a profile page, I noticed an API call to slash user endpoint. And in the request body, there was one parameter which is the user hash parameter. And when we send the request, we get back all account details. The very first thing that came in my mind when I saw this request is to test for IDOR or insecure direct object reference. But I still don't know anything about this hash, like how and where it was generated. And brute forcing it was impossible since it's a long alphanumerical string. I really got stuck here and gave up on this vulnerability. But on the next day, I started again with a fresh mind and the very first thing that I thought of is to check the JavaScript files in the registration page. When I checked the page source, I found a file called register.js. I opened the file and started analyzing it. This file was actually obfuscated when I was analyzing it on a target. But when I created this lab, I didn't obfuscate it, just to demonstrate to you how everything works here. It starts by referencing the input fields, then when the form is submitted, it prevents the submission behavior and calls the gen user hash function, and it passes to it two parameters, the first name and the last name. In the gen user hash function, it starts by concatenating the first name and the last name, and store it in a full name variable, then it reverses the full name and appends the current date to it from the get day function. The get day function returns today's date concatenated together, then it converts or encodes this string to bytes. Then it uses the crypto API to calculate the SHA-256 sum of the string and finally passes the raw bytes of the hash to the hex encode data function. This function, all what it does is hex encoding the buffer or the raw bytes of the hash. It's identical to that binask the hex lafi in Python 3 or the encode to hex in Python 2. Finally, this hash is sent to the slash API slash register endpoint along with the first name, last name, email, and the password. At this point, I was fired up because all what I needed to do now is to get the first name and the last name of any user and generate the hash and exploit the IDOR vulnerability. But not so fast, because now we need to guess the date that the account was created at. I thought of brute forcing all the dates since 2010 to 2021, but something even better came in my mind which is to run the hoes command on the target domain. And when I did so, I found out that this domain was registered in 2017. That means the first ever registered account on this platform was registered in 2017. Now here's the plan. We will get the first name and the last name of any user on the platform and concatenate them together. Then we reverse them and append all the dates since 2017 and finally, we calculate the SHA-256 sum of that string. Luckily, I was able to grab the full name of any user on the platform, because when you post anything on this platform, it gets posted by your full name. In the generate hash script, we import the hashlib module to calculate the SHA-256 sum of the reverse string and the sys module to get the program arguments. We start by checking if we have three arguments, 
the program name, the first name, and the last name. And if so, pass them to the main function. In the main function, we open a word list file to write the hashes to. Then we concatenate the first name and the last name and store the result in the full name variable. Then we reverse it, then we brute force all the dates since 2017. Then we use the firma string function to put all of them together. The colon 0 2 here to pad the day and the month with 0, then we calculate the SHA256 sum for this string and hex encode it. And finally, write it to the word list file. Now let's run this script and brute force the hash for the user John Doe using Perb Suite Intruder. Forward the request to the intruder tab and click on clear. Then highlight the user hash parameter and click on add. Then load the hashes word list and click on start attack. After I sent exactly 20 requests, I got back 429, which is too many request status code. There was some kind of rate limiting on this endpoint and I had to wait for another 5 minutes to send another 20 requests, which would take forever to brute force the hash for the single user. I tried to add headers like x 4 x 4 xremote IB, or x client IP to bypass the rate limiting, but with no luck. But when I started to fuzz the headers, I found out that you can bypass the rate limiting when you modify the refer header, which means after each 20 requests, we need to alter the value of the referrer header. Now since my Burp Speed professional license expired and I was stuck with the community edition version, it would take me forever to brute force any hash. So I created a POC.py script to mimic Burp Speed intruder attack. In a POC script, we import the requests module to send HTTP request. The threading module to create threads to speed up the brute forcing. Says to get the program arguments. The modules random and string to generate a random character and appends it to the referrer header each 20 requests to bypass the rate limiting. Here we define two global variables, the hashes word list and the hash found variable to check if the hash is already found or not. We start by checking if the number of arguments equals to two which are the program name and the number of threads. And if so, we call the main function and pass to it the number of threads as a parameter. In the main function, the threads number is set to 10 by default. Here we define the headers for the request, which are the refer header, the content type header, and the cookie header. You can proxy any request through verb and copy the cookies from it and paste them in the script. Then we start the number of threads to supply as argument. Each thread will execute the POC function and the request headers passed as a parameter. In the POC function, we start a while true loop, then we reference the global variables that we defined above. Then we read one hash at a time from the hashes word list and store it in a user hash variable. Then before we proceed, we check if the user hash variable is equal to nothing, which means end of file, or if the hash is already found. And if so, we kill all the threads. Here we define the endpoint URL, then we define the post data in JSON format. Then we send the request, then print the response status code to the screen. Here we check if the response status code equals to 429, which is too many requests. And if so, we modify the referrer header and append a random character to it. Then we send the request again, and if the response status code equals to 200, that means we found the correct user hash. So here we print a valid hash and set the global hash found variable to true. When I first ran the script, I got back 403 forbidden status code for some reason. So I proxied the Python request through Burp Suite to investigate. And when I did so, I got back bot detected in a response. I even used other fuzzing tools like fuff and wfuzz and got the same response back. There are some sort of checks that happen in the back end that flags these tools as bots. But we didn't get back this response code when we were fuzzing with Burp Intruder. The reason for that is because each one of these tools has its own user agent header. 
So if we replace the Python request user agent header with any normal user agent, we can bypass this bot detection mechanism just fine. So I did that and the script worked just fine. Now let's remove any debugging output to speed up the process. And when I ran the script again, I got back my beloved valid hash. I tested the same attack on other users to make sure everything works fine and as I expected everything went the way I want. I quickly wrote a report and submitted to the program page on HackerOne and they rewarded me with a $1,000 bounty. So the takeaways from this vulnerability, don't you ever underestimate the power of the JavaScript files. One last thing, these kind of videos take a lot of time to create. So please, if you like it or learned anything from this video, please consider subscribing to the channel to motivate me to create more videos like this one, especially when 97% of you guys are not subscribed. I still have some bug bounty reports like this that I want to share with you in the future. So stay tuned. And until then, have a great day. Peace.